بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم دا ٹاپک فار آر ڈسکشن از ریئل ٹائم پی سی آر اینڈ اٹس رول ان دا ملیکولر ڈائگنوسس اٹس اے ویری انٹریکٹو ٹاپک اینڈ اٹس اے ویری ہاٹ ٹاپک ناؤ اے ڈیز بیکاز ریئل ٹائم ہیز وائڈ اپلیکیشنز ان وچ ون آف دا موسٹ امپارٹنٹ اینڈ دا اسٹرائکنگ اپلیکیشن از دا ملیکولر ڈائگنوسس دیٹ وی جنرلی یوز ان آر کلینیکل لیبارٹریز ایکچولی so before going to the detail of this uh, discussion so let some uh, clarify some confusion and uh, make a little bit correction in our general concept so usually uh, whenever we talk about the real time pcr uh, at several places uh, we, we 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 come across uh, this kind of uh, the abbreviation rt pcr and we confuse the we confuse this this rt pcr with with the real time pcr so this abbreviation rt pcr <coughs> is actually means is uh, an assay uh, and it's, uh, it's it's basically a reverse transcriptase pcr so rt is a reverse transcriptase pcr reverse transcriptase pcr is not a machine basically it's a it's the name of uh, a method name of an assay Uh, wherein the RNA is converted to the DNA. It's a reverse transcription. It, it performs the reverse transcription process actually. But with the RT-PCR, you really mean the machine that is performing uh, the real-time analysis, then its actual uh, uh, abbreviation is small r, small t, and the PCR. So it's a real-time polymerase chain reaction, RT-PCR. And there is another... Uh, abbreviation qpcr qpcr is also a method name it's not a machine name and uh, which actually means a quantitative pcr means uh, where the number of copies are calculated in the real uh, sense in the real mean while uh, <coughs> thermocycle is a general pcr machine that we usually call as a conventional pcr the machine which performs the polymerase chain reaction and here uh, we have given some of the pictures for the clarification This picture represents the real-time PCR machine which perform the whole analysis, the whole steps and uh, we are quantifying or performing the qualitative analysis in the real time while this machine is a thermocycler. We also call it as an endpoint PCR machine because uh, in, 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 this, in this kind of the machine whenever we perform the analysis Uh, we have uh, to wait until the finalization of the reaction then we take out the sample and uh, we perform the electrophoresis for the resolution of the of the product and then we place that gel in a gel documentation system or the uv trans eliminator to look at the product whether we have gotten uh, uh, the product or not and if we have gotten the product then how many products uh, did we got so real time uh, concept of the real time and uh, end point pcr machine as i explained in my previous slide real time pcr this is this machine is a real time pcr machine and it perform the analysis in a real time basically uh, there in 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 that kind of the pcr machine we use some kind of the probes that are uh, labeled with some fluorescent dye so and there is present a detector so whenever the product is generated the product is quantified in terms of the fluorescence emission and that fluorescence emission is detected by the detector present in that machine and all these processes are being done in the real time so that's why this machine is called as the real time pcr machine and this thermocycle which is called as the endpoint pcr machine as i explained that the analysis needs to be completed inside this machine thermocycler then it is electrophoresed on the gel and then it is quantified uh, on the uh, uh, Juvitrons eliminator. So uh, what's the idea or what's the basic mechanism behind this polymerase chain reaction actually? So it's uh, basically a method where we get uh, multiple coffee copies of a targeted DNA. And after every step, the number of copies become double. For example, if we take a start from a single copy, so this single copy generate two daughter copies, 
and in the next step when these daughter copies again it replicate it, each copy produces two copies so in the fourth in the third step we get four copies out of the two and then so on in the fourth step we get eight copies and then so on after every step we get a double number of copies of the uh, starting material so uh, you can say that it's a photocopier machine of uh, DNA where we provide the template and as a result we get the multiple copies of uh, that particular and targeted DNA uh, fragment if we look into the history of uh, the PCR uh, the very first idea of uh, polymerase chain reaction was proposed by H.G. Khurana and his colleague in 1970 however they couldn't uh, prove this idea experimentally but later on uh, Dr. Kerry Mullis in 1983 he revised this idea and proved it experimentally basically for which uh, he, he was awarded a Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1993 and this idea was basically uh, appreciated by the science magazine in 1989 and declared the PCR as the major breakthrough study. The components that are required for a polymerase chain reaction includes a DNA sample as a template primers which basically define the boundaries of the targeted uh, DNA fragment uh, for whom we uh, require the multiple copies nucleotides uh, all the four nucleotide DCCT, DCTP, DGTP, DATP and DTTP and these nucleotides act as a raw material uh, tag polymerase the enzyme which basically joins these nucleotides to make a DNA strand and the buffer which provides the optimum conditions for the tag polymerase to perform its activity and uh, <clears throat> the thermocyclic conditions which are required to uh, proceed the reaction uh, the thermocyclic conditions are basically divided into three major steps the first step is the denaturation step in which 95 degree temperature high temperature is provided to separate the double stranded DNA to make it a single stranded DNA <clears throat> then three cyclic steps are being performed uh, however the major uh, the other major step uh, includes the annealing phase the annealing uh, phase involves a binding of uh, the primer with the template basically and for that binding uh, we need to reduce the temperature from 95 to 55 degrees centigrade and then again for the optimum activity of the tag polymer the temperature needs to be uh, raise up to 72 degrees centigrade and this step is called as the extension phase so the PCR single cycle of the PCR it involves three step denaturation primary annealing and the extension or the polymerization phase in denaturation the temperature is raised up to 95 degrees centigrade to separate the DNA strand in annealing phase the temperature brings down to 55 degrees centigrade so that the primers the DNA primers they bind to their particular target and then again the temperature is raised up to 72 degrees centigrade for the synthesis or the polymerization of the DNA strands. Detection chemistry in the real-time PCR. So the real-time PCR as, uh, uh, as I explained in the start of my lecture that uh, the detection is in the real time. So that's why we call it the real-time PCR. So the detection chemistry, the detection molecules in the real-time PCR involves either the intercalating dyes. These are just a coloring agent, the fluorescent agent, <coughs> which emits the light and based on the emission of the light intensity, the quantity of the DNA is determined. Well, on the other hand, the real-time PCR also uses a hydrolysis probe. So hydrolysis probes are basically a short oligonucleotide DNA fragment with which certain fluorophores are attached. So the fluorescent dye as they uh, entangle inside the double stranded copies of the DNA which are being synthesized during the PCR reaction. So that's why these are called as the intercalating dye. While in the hydrolysis probe the DNA fragment it attaches with the DNA copies that are being synthesized and then after the hydrolysis of the probe the fluoris the fluorescence they emit the light which is being detected by the detector but the sequence specific probe they there are three types linear probe 
molecular beacon and the Scott beam probes. Here in this lecture, we will simply take a linear probe just uh, to give an idea that how the real time chemistry detection chemistry works basically. <clears throat> so, first is the intercalating dye. Intercalating dye, one of uh, the most popularly used intercalating dye is cyber green. So, what it does actually, the cyber as uh, the reaction goes on and the multiple copies of the DNA are being synthesized. So, before the attachment of this dye, this dye is not excited and it doesn't emit the light, it doesn't emit the fluorescence. So, when as the DNA copies they are synthesized, the cyber green molecules which entangles are intercalate in between the double stranded DNA and after intercalating they, they are excited and they emit the light. So after every cycle as the more the DNA copies they are being synthesized more cyber green will be attached and there will be more light emission. So it's a very uh, simple chemistry. On the other hand the tag pen probe which we also call as a linear probe they are actually a DNA oligonucleotide fragment. On the one end of this probe is attached a reporter dye, which is the actual reporter dye which upon excitation emits the light. But on the other hand of the probe is attached a quencher dye. This quencher dye basically it uh, prevents the excitation of the uh, reporter dye as long as they are in the close vicinity to each other. So during the polymerization reaction, when this probe it attaches with the the pro uh, with the template DNA, so as the reaction is, is going on, and uh, the tag polymerase it reaches the probe, so it hydrolyzes this probe. So upon the hydrolysis, the reporter dry, it is <coughs> it is released from the probe or detached from the probe, and it it goes away from the quencher. So when it goes away from the quencher obviously uh, its fluorescence will be emitted. So upon the emission of the fluorescence, that fluorescence is detected in the detector present inside the real-time PCR machine. So going again through the idea of uh, the probe that how it works basically. Probe is a short oligonucleotide DNA fragment and it shows complementarity with the target DNA basically. So probe is always a uh, sequence specific it detects the sequence basically and uh, its detection is perfectly accurate compared to the cyber green dye because cyber green dye it cannot detect its actual target it binds with any double stranded dna whether it's a specific target whether it is a non specifically amplified dna molecule while tagman probe as it is a DNA molecule and it shows complementarity with the target, so it only binds with its specific target. It will never bind with the non specifically amplified DNA fragments. So the Tagman chemistry is much more accurate than the cyber green. And the reporter dye it will only emit the radiation, only emit with only emit the fluorescence when it is away from the quencher. Because when during the hydrolysis phase <clears throat> during the primer extension when this tag polymerase due to its 5' prime to 3' prime exonuclease ability it will chop off this probe the reporter will go away and the quencher will no longer be able to prevent its emission hence the reporter will emit its radiation 